people have asked me why I don't go and find proper work in the big cities, like all men. Like all men, I ask. Leaving one's family and relatives for a whole year, does that make a man? Living in hostels for men only, does that make a man? Being scared of the white men with all the monies, dying in the mines while digging for gold and not being able to bring back a little piece for a friend to see. Does that make a man? No, I don't think so. I am a man, and this is where I want to be. In the countryside, with my family, and people who know me. With all men gone, I feel like the colorful long, long-tailed bed Jobella, surrounded by women all the time. Surrounded by women all the time. Why did not all these cities like all men? Like all men, I ask. How's it? Detentions, harassments, all these kind of things have failed. The more they do it, the more I become brave. In Zulu, we say that unless you have gone through hard times, you cannot be a man. If you want to find out what I'm made of, the formula includes pain. So we start. This is something about last year. I begin. Alum, all alum. 176 days, 176 nights in solitary confinement. Alum, all alum. Perhaps like God on the day of creation. Alum, all alum. Perhaps like an animal inside the cage. 176 days, 176 nights in solitary confinement. Alone, all alone, alone, all alone. No music, not for, even from the police brass band. Alone, all alone, no mirror permitted to create my twin self and conquer the loneliness. Alone, all alone, ordered to sleep naked in a forced apartheid stretcher. Alone, all alone, alone in a solitary cell. Alone. Alone in a solitary corner, alone, alone in solitary confusion, alone, alone in solitary conversation, alone, yes, alone in solitary combat against solitary confinement, alone, all alone. The nature of how I operate has become my lifestyle and second nature and accepted in the family that I'm this particular father who won't be at home all the time. I'm this particular husband who won't always be next to his wife. And this is accepted. was <laughs> 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 Yeah. She just said to me the other day, she wants to be a lawyer because his father gets detained so many times. <laughs> but in spite of that, I must say, I hope she grows up not in the type of government that we are in. Because obviously, if she grew up in the same way that we do, then there's just, the future is just blink. 
When you're looking at what has happened, I mean, the house has been recently bombed and, you know, there's been other attempts on his life. And I mean, because we're part of the family, obviously we have to suffer with him. It's quite scary because you don't know what could happen to him at any time. I just have to be by him most of the time instead of hope and pray for him. If I've managed to escape the police, it's because I was in Soweto. It's my home. It's part of me. When it's rainy times, it's muddy, it's terrible. And people without running water using the bucket system. But I like the vibe, but I like the noise. Even my tone, my language, is that of the people in the ghetto. I'm called upon all the time to express solidarity and render poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Kipi was a jazz veteran. He was a victim of apartheid. He died being a pauper, but he imparted his skills to many other musicians. A tribute to Morolong of Kipi Muketi. He died on the 27th of the 4th, 1983, at Baraguana. Like all birds do, Kipi did not forewarn us about his intention to fly away. To the greatest giants of this world, I say, fly well, Kipi. Fly well, Morolong. The doors of your nest and a wide open awaiting the arrival of a giant. That is you, Kitty. The sounds of your clarinet. The sounds of your alto saxophone. The sounds of your voice. And the thoughts of your ministry will have an eternal home in the hearts and the ears and the minds. Please fly back through us, through our dreams. Fly back, please, fly back through our thoughts. Please fly, fly back uh, during our manufacturing of new sounds like you did, like you used to do. Fly well, Kipi. Fly well, Morolong. Amanda. Amanda. He was the Duke. Man ought to do what he thinks is best. He was John Wayne, and he was my dad. Hi, I'm Michael Wayne. In his lifetime, my dad was honored with an Oscar by his peers and a special congressional gold medal by his country. Today, his fans can honor their memory of him with the first and only collector plate the Wayne family has ever authorized. The Franklin Mint, in conjunction with the Wayne family, is proud to introduce the John Wayne Collector's Plate, an exclusive limited edition created by world-renowned artist Robert Tannenbaum. Bordered in 24 karat gold, this fine porcelain plate is a collector's masterpiece. The artist's signature and your individual issue number are on the back stamp. This limited edition will close forever after 45 firing days. So call 1-800-603-1700 now to place your order. Send just $39.95 plus $2.95 for shipping and handling, or use your major credit card. Jose Chouinard, 1994 Canadian figure skating champion. My hair started to begin with, and skating makes it worse. I've tried some two-in-ones, but they just didn't give me enough conditioning. Perk Plus brings you a two-in-one breakthrough. 
extra conditioning for dry, damaged hair. It conditions twice. First, it conditions all over. Then it sends extra conditioning to damaged areas. So if you have dry hair and want it to be more manageable, try Pro Plus Extra Conditioning. It's breakthrough care for dry, damaged hair. government has been using the fact that we are different tribes and speaking different languages and things like that and they've divided us that way. But for me and for a lot of artists, those differences are a compliment. You've got so much to draw from. I don't think you can move forward when you don't know where you come from. You know, so we need to have a vision for the future, but we need to draw a lot from, from where we come from to, to, to survive in, in, in the present situation. That's why I tell stories to children. It's a gap that I found myself moving into. Storytelling, especially reviving African folk tales and making them enjoyable for all South African children, is another way of knowing ourselves. <laughs> There was a place with lots and lots of animals. Amongst these animals were also snakes. And there were rabbits. And there were beautiful birds. And Jobella with a long, 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 long tail with lots of little females flying happily around the Jobella. And there were peacocks. There were tigers with their spots. But amongst all these animals, there were poor little tortoises. And what the tortoises look like when they're sitting next to a big rock? They look just like a rock. You can look at storytelling as an early form of theater in Africa. Leonie Beckel wrapped the shell and she was starting, starting to look very different from the other tortoises. She was looking cleaner and she went around. See if anybody can notice that now she is clean. She went around. And the because tortoises... there was a certain time when the sun was setting when the first star, Elisa Apollo, you call it uh, the North Star, when the first star came up, it heralded storytelling immediately. And the mothers would start, the grandmothers would start, the grandfathers would start telling stories. It was a wonderful time. I mean, it's enough of Mickey Mouse and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. It's nice, I agree, but we've got our own stories too. And also the children of those children had what? the shells with the patterns at the back. So that's how the tortoises got those shells like that. And that queen, they said, you've suffered so much, it's okay, you'd be our queen then. <laughs> For me, always, human beings and their feelings are the focus of my work. It's easy to forget the person under the politics. That's my worry. For me, culture is a weapon that doesn't rust. <laughs> <laughs>